Are you intelligent? It's a confronting question, and to some people it's a frustrating question, because if you have spent any time at all thinking about it or researching it, you will have quickly realised that it's not easy to define what intelligence is. Hi, I'm R. And I'm Jay. And in this video, we'll be discussing how we might define and measure intelligence. Let's get started. If we simply refer to the dictionary, we find that it describes intelligence as the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. But that's a little vague, isn't it? How are we supposed to use that definition to answer the question, am I intelligent? The reason the dictionary definition isn't satisfying is because it answers the question, what is intelligence, but doesn't give us a way to measure it. And that really is what we want to know when we ask the question. So how can we measure something as vague and general as the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills? Well firstly, let's take a look at the major aspects of what defines intelligence. Knowledge in a biological sense can be thought of as the ability for your brain and nervous system to record interactions with the outside world through your senses. This obviously means that memory is going to play a big role in determining just how intelligent a person can be. A skill, on the other hand, can be thought of in its most general sense as a function or action with a desired outcome. This is what a person can do with the information they have available from their memory. The interaction of these two factors is ultimately what determines a person's intelligence. The volume of information processed and the accuracy of that information to achieve a desired outcome. So let's look at what good information processing might look like. When we look at a calculator, we don't generally think of it as being intelligent, but even the most basic calculator can receive a fairly large number of varied calculations and consistently turn out answers to very complex equations that many people, some mathematicians excluded, would likely struggle with. But of course, a calculator doesn't make decisions for itself and is very limited in the types of information it can process. Let's step it up then to a modern home computer. Like the calculator, the computer processes information for a predetermined outcome based on its programming. But a computer can produce a much wider range of outcomes based on its software and computations, though initiated by a person. They generally occur outside the user's control as the computer's programming makes a decision of how to achieve the desired outcome as initiated by the user. As computer hardware gets better and software engineering more complex, computers are processing information at greater and greater speeds and volume, nearing that of a human brain. Combine that with the understanding that an electronic signal moves many times faster than a biological one, it's not hard to imagine computers outperforming humans in regards to speed and volume information processing. Still, we cannot truly regard them as intelligent just yet. Perhaps because even though a computer can acquire and apply new knowledge, without human intervention it can't learn any new skills. When we look at measuring the speed of information processing in regards to humans, we have to look at memory, or more specifically, working memory. Working memory refers to the capacity to retain short-term knowledge of your environment. It's important because when we are presented with new information, our brains require time to analyze the significance of that information and choose an action to take. That action might be something as simple as comparing the context of this sentence with the previous one, something that is impossible without working memory, because working memory is the ability to retain specific information while thinking about that information and its relevance to the current situation. Measures of working memory have been found to be greater predictors of academic success than IQ scores in young children. The good news is that working memory is a skill that can be trained and improved to a degree. For some examples of working memory exercises, check the description. It's true that a good memory and the ability to process information quickly is extremely important for gauging intelligence. Some of us learn faster than others and find it easier to remember specific details when called upon, but these things alone don't equate to intelligence. If we look at intelligence as an outcomes-based measurement, then not only do we have to consider the speed and volume of information being processed, but the accuracy as well. What a person does with the information available to them will directly affect the outcome of their decisions. So how can we test this? Well first we must determine what is accuracy. When we think about mathematics, it becomes easy to check if an equation was solved correctly or incorrectly. However, in more dynamic scenarios which require abstract concepts to solve problems, it becomes a little more difficult. The reality is that it's extremely difficult to determine what is correct in regards to an abstract problem, such as determining if a suspected murderer is guilty or innocent. 
Depending on the evidence available, we may not know for certain. However, we can determine based on reasonable doubt if the accused is likely to be guilty or not. To do this fairly requires a critical analysis of any information available. Critical thinking is not as simple as just thinking hard about a situation or the information available to your working memory. It is a structured reflection of the information which removes as much bias and inconsistent reasoning as possible. This allows your brain to more accurately categorize information in your long-term memory, as well as respond to the current situation with minimal influence from cognitive pitfalls, such as your personal biases or heuristic tendencies. What this boils down to is greater accuracy in decision making by minimizing issues involved with interpretation of information. Whilst being wrong does not make you inherently unintelligent, being able to critically examine incoming information to determine its accuracy and filter out that which is inconsistent or wrong is essential. Indeed, critical thinking skills are being recognized as one of the most important factors in overall success. Many businesses have implemented critical thinking assessments and questionnaires as part of their employment process. So why is critical thinking important? If working memory is the notepad your brain uses to help it solve problems, then critical thinking is the language it is written in. If your brain can't understand the significance of what is being written down, then it becomes very difficult to do anything useful with that information. There is a growing body of research that shows critical thinking assessments are one of the greatest predictors of success, not just in academia, but in a range of professional fields. Luckily, there is also a strong body of evidence within the literature that shows critical thinking is a skill that's efficacy is determined by practice and conscious application. Often critical thinking requires conscious effort to overcome predetermined cognitive biases, which can be very difficult. There are a range of online tests available which can help you assess and practice your own critical thinking skills. Check out the links in the description and share your scores in the comments section. There is one more possible component that we should consider when discussing intelligence. Motivation for a task directly influences the degree to which a person will invest energy and effort into said task. When looking at intelligence as an outcomes-based measure, it becomes apparent that motivation is going to impact heavily on the outcome of a task, and therefore will likely impact a person's overall measure of intelligence. This is some very dynamic considerations, as motivation can vary wildly, and is something we don't often consider as a skill or as an inherent factor of intelligence. In regards to psychology, motivation can be thought of as a psychological force that enables action. We should remember that the brain has limited resources to engage in any given task. Motivation acts as the driver for utilizing as much of those resources as needed to complete a goal. If a person is directly focused on a task, they may be devoting all available cognitive resources to that particular task. However, if the person is more interested in another task, a student thinking about a football game during a math test for example, the brain will reserve resources for that task even if the person is not currently engaged in it. The ability to focus as much of our mental equipment to a particular task can directly affect the speed and execution of that task. Of course, this fact is somewhat intuitive but there are other less obvious issues related to motivation. Researchers in cognitive and social psychology have demonstrated that visual perception can be influenced through factors such as goal-oriented motivation as well as emotional state. A 2008 study showed that subjects estimated the height of a building or the steepness of a hill as greater if they experienced fear. An earlier study in 2006 also reported that subjects identified vague images as either the letter B or the number 13 depending on whether the task placed a positive context on letters or numbers. What this means is that your state of mind and goal orientation affects your perception of reality. This is why there is believed to be a strong relationship between an individual's ability to overcome difficulties within a task and their motivation to engage in that task. If you would like to read more about the measures of motivation and how it might influence goal oriented tasks, see the link in the description. In summary, we often think of intelligence as simple and largely a hereditary trait, something as simple as being good at recalling facts and hereditary in that a person is either adept at it or not. But when we consider the aspects of intelligence discussed in this video, which have been shown as reliable predictors of intellectual success, we can see that these skills can be largely influenced by practice and training. Additionally, there is no straightforward description or application of intelligence. It covers a vast amount of possibilities in regards to a person's mental faculties, which makes it difficult to describe and assess as a whole, though we can measure the individual aspects of intelligence discussed in this video. On top of that, intelligence is influenced by an individual's personality and motivation, which is something not typically associated with intelligence but strongly influences the outcomes. If Newton or Einstein had no motivation to actually work anything out, then from an outcomes-based approach, it would be hard to describe either of them as intelligent. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe for regular videos, like this video, and share it around to help us raise the bar of public discourse.